Hi, good morning and warm welcome to all. Thank you for joining this webinar on Enhancing Your Quality Assurance Strategy to Achieve Agile Quality Engineering, which is jointly conducted by Aspire Systems and Mansfield. I'm Christina, working as a research analyst at Aspire Systems. I'd be your host. Let me now introduce the speakers for the day we have. Katie Kavanaugh, she is the Quality Assurance Director of Mansfield. She has more than 15 years of overall IT and QA industry experience. Katie is a strategic global IT industry leader with extensive experience in establishing full organizational QA governance, policy and programs. She holds a solid record of successfully building and managing teams and driving quality programs. She has experience and understanding of multiple industry methodologies and frameworks such as Waterfall, Agile, CMMI, Scrum, and ITIL. Also, we have Vasant Manikam. He is a seasoned technical test manager who has worked across different domains, projects, and tools in testing. His core expertise is test automation and performance testing that includes consulting, implementation, and tools. He is the technical architect of the test automation framework created and implemented for Mansfield. Basant is an avid QA practitioner and has been an active member of the internal QMS audit group of Aspire Systems. Now, let me quickly brief you on what Aspire and Mansfield do. Mansfield Energy is the most trusted partner for fuel supply, logistics, and widely known for providing innovative solutions for energy procurement, supply, and logistics challenges for companies and government agencies across North America. For the past 60 years, the company has been supporting over 8,000 customers in various geographical locations. Their headquarters is in Gainesville, with region, regional operations centers located in Chicago, Houston, Los Angeles, and many other places. Coming to Aspire Systems, we are a global technology services firm with expertise in software engineering, digital services, testing, and infrastructure and application support. Aspire Systems works with independent software vendors and some of the world's most innovative enterprises in retail, PFSI, and educational verticals. The company currently has more than 3,000 employees, 150 plus customers globally, and is CMMI Level 3 certified. We are selected as the finalists for the famous European Software Testing Awards under the category Best Test Automation Project under non-functional and best use of technology in a project. Aspire has a growing presence in the US, UK, Middle East, Asia Pacific, and Europe. In today's session, Katie will be covering the following topics. Knowing your company's business, do you have the right team, organizational strategy and goals, which includes people, tools, and structure, agile governance, policy, and process model. And Vasant will brief about the right testing strategy and landscape alignment and futuristic relevancy. Before we dive into the details, there are a few instructions I'd like to share. During this session, if you have any questions, please type them in the question tab located at the bottom. And we will provide answers during the Q&A session towards the end of the webinar. In case we run out of time and are not able to provide answers to your questions, we'll get back to you via email. Thank you once again for joining the webinar and enjoy, enjoy the session. Over to you, Katie. Thanks, Christina. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Today's presentation talks about how we have implemented a strong quality assurance governance policy and process platform in order to achieve agile quality engineering in the delivery of our program strategy and execution activities. The key point to keep in mind for this presentation is that Mansfield is not a software development shop. We're an energy company. However, we rely heavily on technology in order to deliver our products and services successfully to our customer base. So knowing your business, the first key step to establishing our platform for the technology team at Mansfield, it is imperative that we know our company and its business. There are many complex layers of industry influencers that have to be considered when moving fuel. All of these factors are intertwined within our system and require minute-by-minute -minute data management seven days a week. 
So for us, what is the company problem statement that we are solving for? We're upgrading a company enterprise ERP system that covers front, middle, and back office process and operations on new technologies and frameworks. In assessing your company's problem statement, you should understand very specifically, are you supporting internal IT and business framework, or are you supporting software out the door? What is the expectation of our organization? We are a company in the energy sector that leverages a homegrown enterprise suite to support the daily business operations. The quality assurance team is part of the inter internal business technology group that is implementing this system. Is this a long-term or short-term objective? For us, the system upgrade has been a four-plus year initiative. After the upgrade is complete in December, we will transition to long-term continuous maintenance and enhancement. As you define your objectives, think about whether the objective is a new program versus keeping the lights on. When we hire on a new team, members on new team members, we expect them to know the company as well as the energy industry landscape. The industry is in constant change. Our business and system model must be prepared to support those changes. We require new hires to take our Mansfield business and energy sector training. Having the right team. The second key step is about your team. It is important to understand up front what type of team, what type of team is required to support the system. Are you building a new team, adding to existing, or retaining? Evaluate whether the current team can support the program or if a new team is required to replace or supplement. What type of skills or technical training might be needed? Does your team have the right skills? We needed a mix of both manual and automation testers. We also require that team members must be seasonal and quality assurance industry level foundational and best practices. Experience working on large enterprise systems with complex and layered backdrops is absolutely required. Now this is not to say that we wouldn't hire a college intern or new industry talent, but we now have the core team established to provide the right training and mentorship. Four years ago at Mansfield, even though we had an existing team, we essentially rebuilt the team and program from the ground up establishing standards and best practices that align with both Mansfield and IT industry expectations. Upon establishing your team, it's critical to ensure that you have a unified team commitment. This commitment should align with the higher business strategy and product delivery quality goals. For us, it is, it is about delivering on quality by focusing on excellence. It is about empowering our teams and recognizing their successes. Developing a culture that's passionate about quality and accountability. Our team commitment aligns directly with our Mansfield core principles. So the next section dives a little deeper into governance and policy expectations. In addition to having a team commitment, it is key to ensure everyone is on the same page when it comes to your quality directive. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the concepts of scope, resources, time, and quality. For us, scope is the focal point and quality is the constant. We can negotiate resources, time, and scope but cannot jeopardize quality. If we put out a poor release, that could impact our ability to create orders, schedule deliveries, deliver fuel, and bill customers. This in turn pack impacts our external customers. Our customers are school bus systems, city buses, construction sites, hospitals, postal and delivery, any business that relies on fuel and energy sources. As you step into the program layers, you and your team should evaluate for each new release or project what are the expected outcomes. What are the quality services that your team is being hired for? Are there other teams that also hold accountability for these validation layers? 
What is the investment in cost and time that your company expects? This is where you start thinking about the cost of an impact, defects, outages, breaches, and etc. What activities must be performed in order to drive successful user acceptance and sign-off? For each project or change, you, can, you should consider what is the need. Are you validating for usability, security, performance, requirements delivery, or maybe even all of the above? Okay, so now you understand your company, your people, your commitment, and quality expectations. These aspects are foundational to have in place as you begin to build your governance framework goals. Some things to consider. For us, our goals were to deliver high quality software and services, provide greater transparency to the business on risk and dependencies, provide real time and proactive guidance on quality, better manage the financial footprint of quality and our perceived cost of a defect. And I'll talk more on this in a few slides. And finally, adherence to compliance for quality, security, fraud, and data, helping protect the company. Think about your governance goals at the strategic program level, not just during validation and verification, from product initiation out to the customer site. With goals in alignment, what are your COE pillars? Have you established an agile governance model? Ours are governance, policy, and processes, automation and tools, testing as a service, and driving to success with metrics and continuous improvement. Under our governance pillar, we have business alignment. We focus on compliance and accountability. And we have a full policy and process model for our software development lifecycle framework. Under automation and tools, we ensure that we are using the right tools and technologies to support our delivery pipeline. We focus on the automation of the development and QA CICD pipeline. Our CICD pipeline is built to allow for plug and play tools such as code quality and various test platforms. Our QA testing as a service pillar houses our core quality assurance team. It's a 360 degree testing model that depending on the needs of the project provides all levels of testing services from UI oriented front end to back end database or API testing. We have also established a full UAT framework that mimics the same policy and standards as the core framework. We require it since we rely heavily on the domain knowledge of our internal customers. And finally, our Measuring for Success pillar focuses on quality accountability measurements, risk management, continuous training, and mentorship of our team. And lastly, not just adherence to compliance, but also how to get the teams back on track when noncompliance does occur. Things that you should consider when defining your COE pillars. What is the development delivery approach? Are there specific regulations, formal guidelines, audit compliance requirements? What is the cost of a defect for your organization? Are you driving towards zero defects, or is there a level of leniency versus cost that could be considered? Our governance model applies to all of the technology team. This ensures a united governance front. So this slide covers one of the key quality benefits from governance alignment. This goes back to understanding your problem statements. Be realistic for implementing your QACOE. Set reasonable transition goals. You will not get there overnight. Four years ago, we started with the first chart. Lots of defects flipping out to production and no controls in place to drive accountability. As we implemented the governance model on the previous slide, we began to see our defect capture trend move left with less defects escaping. And now today, with a mature and continuous improvement model, we are excelling at the bottom right. So this next section gets a little more granular and focused under our testing as a service COE pillar.
The key to building an agile strategy is to remove the policy and make it standard. Gone are the days of preparing a strategy that looks like a book. The traditional strategy can easily have 30 to 100 pages filled with both policy and project specific change. The majority of this does not change from project to project. So what we did is remove everything that was static and we built it into our governance pillar as our standard. So things like testing goals and acceptance, entry and exit criteria, environments, data, tools, root cause analysis, severity and priority classification, defini definition of done. The majority of the time these items will not change and they should stay foundationally the same across all projects. Then we focused on only on the dynamic elements as our strategy coverage. The introduction, what is the, the project or the program itself? What is the scope of that initiative? Is it an enhancement? Is it a full rewrite? Is it bug fixing? What is the feature validation efforts, the test cases, alignment with requirements? And then what is the approach of validating that change? And are there any exceptions to a policy? A good example of an exception might be maybe for one project in particular you have a higher level of um, acceptance, testing goals and acceptance. And then finally, constraints, risk, and mitigation, staying on top of potential blockers to your project as you execute. One important call out, our processes and policies are methodology agnostic, meaning whether we're using Agile, Scrum, Waterfall, or Blend from project to project, our strategy snaps into each of these methodologies. So when defining your Agile strategy approach, you want to embed tactical testing as an integral part of the software life cycle. As mentioned in the previous slide, program strategy should focus on the policy. Validation strategy should focus on the project or the body of change. With our Agile approach, schedule, scope, resources are flexible, but quality must remain constant. Continuous feedback exists at each stage of the software delivery cycle. It is easily maintained through automated analytics. There are strong collaborative and constant communication channels, and we perform regular risk and mitigation. At any time during the program, we consider different avenues of validation to leverage a blended approach. We use a mix of manual testing and automated functional testing to speed up delivery cycle. For your core test team, establish clear governance on static versus dynamic processes. Ensure everyone is trained the same. For your business acceptance team, expect to train them under the same framework and expectations. As you establish a UAT framework, use the same key quality drivers. And most importantly, ensure you have a clear definition of done with formal sign-off that holds the line on delivery of quality. And finally, embed automation wherever it is possible in the process. One of the most successful processes that we employed that ensures consistency across all projects is a template we call the test case approach checklist. This checklist serves as the outline for the test case bed. This checklist contains the definition of and lists all the different types of testing approaches possible. System testing, performance testing, security testing, back-end database, permissions, API, and et cetera. By using this list, we can ensure we are always considering all the different ways to test a change, minimizing the risk of test coverage gap. As you begin each project, build a checklist where you may anticipate changes, risk, or impact possibilities. Review this list on a regular basis. Assess ahead of time how this change might impact your program, schedule, scope, people, and quality. Ensure your team is trained to manage change, both tactically in daily activities and professionally in collaboration. Establish the concept of change as the norm, not the exception. 
It may even be possible to build some bullets on the list into your core automated regression suite. One of the key areas of change that we have to consider in our testing at Mansfield are the key dynamic business components, pricing, products, taxes, seasonal, freight, and etc. For this next set of content, I will hand off to Vasana. He's my automation lead. He'll, he will dive more into the automation and tools pillar and share our implementation approaches. Yes, yeah. thank you, Katie. Yeah, in this section, we'll talk about some of the uh, tricks uh, we have been following at uh, Mansfield. Uh, it is really important that we embrace iteration uh, zero, where we uh, term it as a planning phase, where we get organized and everyone across the team get to know like what need to be done. And even before uh, we start coding and uh, uh, testing, shift left. Don't wait until the uh, development activities gets completed. And the test activity should begin early in the software development uh, phase, starting right from the requirement analysis and the design phase. For instance, the tester should get along with the QA and the, the product owners to understand more about the requirements and start trying to identify the require, requirement defects in that way, it's also to save a lot of uh, cost. Test-driven development. Write test scenarios uh, before uh, coding, which actually helps us to have have the input for the development team, and uh, it acts as a code completion acceptance test. In that way, the development team knows like against what it is their developers is going to get validated. Build the test data even before the test design phase uh, starts and ensure it is the right data so that we will not be spending a lot of effort once the code is being delivered and we are already into the test design phase. Pull the business and the UAT team that actually helps us to identify the requirement and the uh, design gap in along with we have been doing the functional validation. And try to employ the continuous performance and system monitoring post the production and that actually helps us to have good volume of information in terms of real world user experience and this acts as a good feedback to the development team to take it forward and try to see whether any performance optimization would be required. Continuous testing. At Mansfield, though knowing like uh, the system is highly complex and it involves lots of modules and features, intentionally we decided like we'll go with incremental test automation. We, we thought of having a test suite which is lean but still having the required uh, test co coverage. And it is being made possible by identifying the right test automation candidate, considering the priorities, uh, the risk area, and other uh, parameters. And over the period of time, once we get along with the uh, iteration, the test case is getting added, and we have been able to add those against the smoke and the regression uh, test pack. And for now, we have around like uh, 800 cases being covered as the part of the functional test automation. And in our journey, not only uh, our application is being tested continuously for the functional, but we also been focusing on the performance and security as well. On the performance, we started building a, uh, the baseline test pack, which helped us to arrive on the baseline. And going beyond, we have been continuously executing these performance uh, baseline pack in order to understand whether any new deployment that have happened over the period of time have actually induced any performance bottleneck. And the time that we are talking about the test automation, it is important that uh, uh, we select the right tools, technologies, and the framework. And some of the key things to be uh, thought about uh, uh, during this uh, selection would be like whether this framework or the tools that you are going to identify for our uh, application, whether it will help us to have an integrated solution, how it will meet the future needs, how it is going to help us in terms of controlling the cost over the script maintenance. So all those things need to be taken into account. And not only uh, these tools, we also uh, need to see what would be the ancillary uh, tools. For example, how we are going to build the solutions in the continuous integration. How the code, the test automation code is going to get validated. How are you going to monitor the, the server and also the real users uh, monitoring. So all those things need to be considered before we uh, identify the right uh, tools and the technology stack for any application. And here is the uh, testing approach uh, we are being following for uh, uh, Mansfield. 
With the help of the automated uh, smoke and the regression uh, test pack, we ensure like uh, the test automation suit is being executed for every new code uh, develop deployment, and also we ensure like uh, it is it is getting tested for each uh, over the each uh, stage of deployment. And uh, on the performance, as I was explaining before, we have been doing a, a comparison against the baseline. So for any new deployment that has been happening, we rerun the baseline test packs, try to do a comparison of all the metrics. For example, it could be the client side metrics or the server side metrics. Try to measure whether there is any deviation against the baseline. If that is the case, we take it forward with the, the respective technical and the, the development team with all the required observations and the report, and they'll be uh, doing a root cause and try to give a fix for it. And also, in along with the functional and the performance, we also automated uh, some of the business process uh, uh, areas, which is again a, a important thing we were able to achieve at uh, Mansfield. And this has also been uh, tested continuously on a periodical basis. For some of the business process automation, uh, it is being scheduled in such a way that it is getting executed on a weekly basis. A few could be on a bi-weekly basis. So it all depends on the requirements we are being executing on a continuous fashion. And at Manspeed, on the test automation, some of the targeted uh, scope areas uh, were smoke, core regression, full regression on the functional side. Uh, when I say smoke, it is more of a non-transactional. Uh, non-transactional and it focused more on the page navigation, uh, uh, search activities, and it could be menu validation and also uh, the UI component validation. And the core regression, we ensured like uh, the test script covers the end-to-end -end, uh, functionalities, and when it comes to uh, full regression, it is more of a transactional, and it covers the entire, I mean, it cut across all the modules and ensure like all the required uh, uh, functionalities is being uh, tested. And the performance, we have been focusing more on the baseline, and also, we have been testing the application for the load and uh, uh, stress test. Whenever we go for a major release, we ensure the application is being tested for load and uh, stress in order to ensure that it meets uh, the performance SLAs. Before we talked about the approach, and here is a schedule plan uh, uh, we have at uh, Mansfield. Uh, for instance, the smoke, we ensure like it is getting uh, executed for every uh, new deployment. Uh, typically, it happens uh, uh, every week. And uh, even for uh, every DB refresh or on a request basis, all these smoke test cases being executed. And on an alternate week, we, we have been executing both core and the full uh, regression in order to ensure uh, new features that is getting deployed. It is not uh, breaking the existing functionalities. And also the other purpose of uh, having this uh, alternate week execution is to ensure uh, whether there, to identify whether there would be any script maintenance would be uh, required because a lot of new features comes in and we need to ensure like uh, the regression test pack is uh, readily available for any major releases. So that is again another additional purpose we have been executing. Not only the smoke and uh, uh, regression test pack we have, we also ensure like uh, with the help of uh, uh, builds being created in TFS, we'll be able to execute the functional test automation based on the category. For example, let's say a, a development team wants to validate the new functionality and it is focused more on one particular module. So in that case, they don't want to go for a full regression. So they want to selectively uh, identify the appropriate uh, test scripts and they'll be able to run it. So we have given the provision for them so they can step into the TFS, identify the, give the required inputs and they'll be able to execute. And once the execution is completed, they'll be able to identify whether any issues is being available. And on the non-functional, we have been executing on a weekly basis for the uh, baseline. And also for major releases, we'll be doing a uh, load and uh, stress test. And also one-off requests, we also serve it. For example, uh, 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 let's say a major functionality that comes in and it is focused more on a particular functionality, and which means like uh, they, would have, they would ask us to do a performance uh, uh, testing in order to ensure uh, whether it meets the SLAs or not. And also in order to ensure uh, in case of any major DB refresh happens, which means like uh, the data has been pulled from the uh, production to the subsequent uh, environment. So in that case also we do a performance test and to see like uh, the expected uh, performance is being met. So 
by implementing uh, the strategy that we talked about, which is a form of uh, hyper testing, uh, we could see proven test results on cost, time, and uh, quality. So, as I explaining before, uh, the solution that we have implemented at test at uh, Mansfield for uh, test automation is being done with the help of the open source uh, tool, which means like uh, we ended up in uh, spending uh, zero cost uh, to build the right solutions for it, and. Uh, also, we had a robust uh, framework is being built. With the help of it, uh, we ended up with uh, spending less effort on the script maintenance. And uh, till now, we were able to see like 80% uh, uh, of the manual regression uh, effort is being cut down with the help of the, the smoke and the regression pack uh, uh, we have. And also, we were able to give a quick uh, a feedback loop with a turnaround time of less than 1.5 hours. And, uh, by cutting down the total time being spent on the regression test execution with the help of the test automation, we also ensure like we be able to uh, have a faster time to market. On the quality, being the test automation as a quality gatekeeper, we be we be able to identify around like uh, 300 uh, 300 defects by executing both smoke and the regression, uh, which means like uh, there is less amount of uh, defects being uh, escaped to the production. And also with the combined uh, effort of both manual and test automation, we were able to bring down the defect escape ratio to 3%. And when we started our journey, uh, it was somewhere around uh, 30. So overall, we were able to give a better performance experience for the user and also uh, improved product quality. And Thank Katie you, will continue talking about uh, advanced landscape alignment and the features relevancy. Yeah, so this next section is our last and covers our closing si slides, but covers some of the most important topics to ensure your agile quality program is successful and sustainable. So do you have the right infrastructure? Don't wait until the day before you start coding or testing to determine if you have the right environment in place. You want to think about this up front. What are your development tools? What are your testing tools? Are you going to employ code quality tools? In today's new world of technology, you want to look at cloud opportunities. You want to start looking at AI tools. Um, you also want to consider environments monitoring and performance monitoring. Um, what tools are you going to use to manage your defects? And then how are you going to find the right balance with all of these tools across your CI CD pipeline? So don't be afraid to embrace technology and automation. As much as you can, you want to employ automation every step of the way. And then the keys to remember here are make sure that the tools that you have in play are relevant, will remain relevant over time, are futuristic. Are they going to support the new systems from two years from now, three years from now, five years from now? Are they secure? Are they reportable? Can you get the data out as easily as you put it in? Are they integrated or seamless? This may seem like an optional option. But when you go from one system to another and the data stream does not flow across those systems, it can be very awkward in your reporting. And then always making sure that for all the tools that you have in place that you keep them upgraded to current version. So measuring for success. This one covers our fourth quality code, COE pillar. As you build your governance model, establish your team quality standards up front. What are the QA metrics you're going to measure your team by? How will you gather those metrics? What is the value of the data collected? Are the metrics for real-time action or will they trend over time, allowing you to make proactive adjustments along the way? Use your QA metrics to also build out your quality performance standards. Standards should be clear and measurable goals. You should have noncompliance guidance as well as defined resolution guidance. And lastly, continuous improvement. 
With your program milestone, you should implement regular team and individual assessment activities. <clears throat> As you bring on new team members, you should ensure all new team members are trained the same as everyone else. Keep governance and policy relevant and retrain the teams on a regular basis. <coughs> Excuse me. If you have implemented the right tools, you should be able to extract most of what you need for these three areas directly from the tools. So it's important to point out, you can put all the process and policies in place. But ultimately, it's the commitment of the individuals to excellence that drives the highest level of quality in your delivered products. Empowering your team and giving them the tools they need to be successful are key to driving personal commitment to excellence. Thank you. Thank you, Katie, and thank you so much, Gerson. Uh, we have a few questions from the audience, and uh, I'll be reading them one by one. So, uh, what STLC methodology do you use the most at Mansfield? Uh, I think, uh, can you, Katie, please address this question? Yes, I can answer that. So, <laughs> we kind of bounce around here. It really depends on the project or the program that we're working on. Because we support multiple systems across our landscape, our internal system, but we also support third-party systems. Um, some of our programs are more agile oriented and aligned with Scrum, whereas others are very much software development life cycle. And that's why I pointed out the importance of making sure that your governance framework is agnostic and can just snap into each one of those methodologies. Thanks, Katie. Uh, another question, how security testing is integrated to test automation framework? Uh, Vasan, could you please answer? Yeah, sure. Yeah, at Mansfield, uh, the test automation framework has been uh, built uh, using the tool called uh, Direct Testing Framework, and uh, we have been using uh, uh, C-sharp for us. And uh, for on the security testing, we have been using a tool called uh, uh, Zap, Z Attack Proxy. And it provides us a, a list of uh, API packs. So with the help of those uh, API, we were able to do a uh, scanning both passes as well as the, uh, the active uh, scanning. And uh, those APIs have been integrated as part as part of our uh, test automation framework. So what typically happens is like when you start doing your functional uh, validation, when uh, your test script move across all your uh, screens, screens performing the actions, uh, with the help of these API, we were able to uh, interrupt all the requests that goes to the server, and we try to uh, and we were able to do the scanning. And uh, once the execution gets completed, when I say execution, I mean the functional test execution gets completed. We were able to get the test report out of it. All right, thank you, Vasant. And so then a couple the more. Questions. Yeah, a couple more bullets I want to add to that. We do um, work with our internal infrastructure team as well. They have an app scam. App scan um, app application that they used to run across our system, but we also employ manual tester techniques as well. One of the training tools that we have in house is a tool that basically takes the tester through all levels of testing criteria, so down to the um, control level, such as text boxes, combo boxes, URLs, and within that training tool, we also have manual ways that the testers can evaluate to see if the code has been written to properly secure the environment. Okay, uh, Katie, we have another question addressed to you. How do you know you have the right team and the right uh, ratio QA depth when you have automation and manual testing to do? Yeah, really good question. Um, we we try to um, to go against the you know industry standard of um, two to three QA to every five developers, but it really depends on the complexity of the system being implemented. In some areas, we have to have a higher level because of the different complexity matrices of the Mansfield business. Um, we have to do additional testing, probably a higher level testing than the industry standard. I know the industry standard tends to have 
um, QA be about 30% of development efforts. Our, our um, estimates really run a little bit higher on average, around 40 to 50%. So right now it's anywhere from two to three for every five developers. And then for the automation team, um, Vasant, I'll let you speak to that if you want to. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. So for uh, automation, as I said, uh, uh, for at Matchfi, we don't want to uh, take a big bang uh, theory. When you say big bang, uh, we don't want to end up uh, having too many people to get started with. Though uh, we want to have a uh, good coverage, we started doing an incremental test automation, and. Uh, we, I mean, currently we have a set of people who have been contributed. And a key factor to be considered here is like, uh, what is the coverage we want to uh, uh, end it up, and what is the time frame we have? I think these are the two uh, main criteria that will help us to identify how many people or what would be the resource count uh, we would need. Yeah. So when we built out the automation program, we didn't go into it thinking that we were going to have it done in a month. We gave the team uh, a healthy runway to start in targeted scope areas first. And so we did keep the um, automation team uh, very uh, at, a, at a smaller level but very effective and efficient and then gave them the runway to drive out their goals um, as, over time as opposed to trying to get it all done in, in a month's time period. Thank you, Katie and Vasant. And uh, we have another question as well. What tools do you use to manage your CI CD pipeline? So we have our CI CD pipeline embedded into uh, Microsoft Suite. So we use TFS heavily. We use their test management tool as well as this, our CI CD pipeline is embedded in there as well. The, the only core area we don't have um, automated into TFS um, it, or the Microsoft Suite is the test requirements, and we do that manually up front. So, uh, Vasant, do you want to add to that from an automation perspective on, in terms of the CI CD pipeline? Yeah, sure, uh, Katie. Yeah, uh, for test automation, uh, we've also been uh, uh, using TFS, and with the help of the TFS, uh, we'll be able to create the required uh, builds based on the uh, needs, and it is being hooked as part of the CI pipeline. So uh, it comes in different flavors. Uh, I mean, either you can uh, uh, trigger it in a uh, manual way. You just uh, get into that build and just uh, trigger it, which helps us to execute the test script. And uh, the form, as I said, uh, it is being hooked as part of the pipeline. And uh, we have a, a pre-setup. When I say pre-setup, uh, the development deployments and other things. And one that is being done, obviously, our uh, test scripts will get uh, uh, executed. And uh, post that, there will be a set of uh, actions or the bills uh, being added. And that is how our uh, CAE uh, uh, pipeline looks like at this point in time. OK. Uh, another question. How long is the sprint, and what is your release frequency? Now that that's a complicated one to answer, but our sprints are actually two week sprints, and we do um, drive out a set of stories and deliverables for every two weeks. The overall um, release schedule itself can vary. As I mentioned before, we've been in a, in a several year program to upgrade um, our our legacy system, and so in that several year program, we broke it up into. Um, um, I want to say mini releases like every six to eight months. But at the same time that we have that bigger program going out, we also have our support line that we can release on an every two week basis if we need to. Um, I think sometimes we tailor back to more of uh, once a month to actually out to production because we don't want to disrupt our business users too frequently. Uh, we, we do not have, in terms of a continuous delivery, at the level of, oh, we could deliver you know, minute by minute on a daily basis out to production. And we don't want to do that because it does have an impact to our end users. All right. Uh, uh, another question. Are you doing manual and automation testing in the same sprint? Yes, absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. 
as we do, we actually have automation running on a regular schedule regardless of what the sprint cycle is. So we have different levels of smoke, sanity, and regression running across all of our environments. We have three layers of test environment, and depending on the maturity of the code, we'll define where that, that um, feature or functionality gets moved to. And at any given point in time, we have automated scripts running. It's basically hands-off where they're constantly checking regression and making sure things aren't broken. And where we do get involvement is when um, there's a failure or a defect that exists. All right. Thank you so much, Katie. Uh, this brings us to the end of the webinar. I would like to thank Katie and Vasant for coming up for this presentation and sharing their knowledge on the need for quality engineering. Also, our experience working with Mansfield paved the way for us to come up with an innovative agile testing strategy called hypertesting. This solution can actually help organizations to easily perform test automation by leveraging advanced technology while optimizing cost and effort. More insights on this efficient test automation strategy will be briefed in our upcoming webinar called A Holistic Approach to Quality, Hypertesting and Lean Automation. This uh, webinar will be conducted along with Source Labs. More information about this webinar will be informed shortly and all are, all are welcome to attend it. I'm sure this session was very useful for all of us. In case of any queries, please do email us and we would be glad to assist you. Thank you all on behalf of Mansfield and Asper Systems for joining us today. Have a great day.